Hey everybody, Jazzy here, and here is year 25 of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Warly world over on Twitch, part two. Last time we got our ass handed to us by a very enraged dragonfly, and when we last spoke, Warly was just on his way over for round two. So without further ado, let's go. So here's the deal with enraged dfly. She does double damage, pounds the ground for an absolutely staggering area of effect attack, and has a personal fire aura. So you can't just stand on top of her and swing or you will start to take fire damage. So after the first hit, I'm trying to position myself a step back so that I won't take burn damage, then sneak in two to three more hits while she's standing still before dodging the next swipe. Thing is, even if her swipe doesn't connect, you still take fire damage, which as far as I can tell seems entirely unavoidable. I have no idea how you would pull a no damage strat here without fire protection such as scale mail or willow. After she does her ground pound, I'm hitting her with the ice staff to attempt to stun her while I move in and bait the first attack while she's stationary, but it's really hard and I failed it most of the time. All in all, this fight was pretty sloppy. And I appreciate that with late game equipment, I can afford to make a few mistakes and not lose my world. So it's a good strategy to get in practice with some of the more challenging fights in the game. And I do try not to get into too much of a routine with any of these repeated boss fights. After that, I shoot straight over to the loot world, slam some spicy jelly, and start clearing some beehives. I need honeycomb to make beeswax so that I can wax all that giant asparagus. I'm not gonna clear everything because I need to get back in wax those crops before they rot. But eventually, I would like to just stay in this world until all the beehives are gone. Might make for some good ornery beefalo training? I don't know, we'll see. But on that note, I'm turfing up a zone near my chests for a future beefalo pen. I figure I might as well build the infrastructure now before I have an actual beefalo to deal with. I want to use the waxed asparagus for the corner walls and walnut fencing for the sides. I'll also sneak it in the bee queen fight this spring while the world is wet. I use pan flutes liberally for this fight, and the argument almost always arises that this method is expensive. Bee Queen is one of those boss fights that's hard to pull off cheaply, so for me it comes down to the question of, okay, what kind of resources do I want to spend on this fight? On one side there's healing items, but that option is much less available to Warly because of his repeat dish penalty. You can't just run up with seven beekeeper hats and a stack of pierogi, but consider the actual cost of that method over a stack of silk, half a stack of grass, and multiple stacks of numerous crockpot ingredients. If you deconstruct a pan flute at 10%, then you are effectively paying about a quarter of a green gem for nine pan flute uses. For this fight, I blew the flute about 12 times. And in the final two phases, I alternated between tanking with marble suits and blowing the flute. So aside from that third of a green gem, I spent one marble suit, one Thulacite crown, and about 182 points worth of healing. Based on the resources I have available, I consider that relatively cheap compared to Warly's other options, but that's just me. I got a frog rain in my base, and it actually lasted long enough for me to run all the way to the horny cows and let them harvest some frogs for me. Beefalo are great for frog rains, but just make sure that the frogs don't overwhelm them because they can definitely wipe out herds. If I see beefalo start to die, then I'll just unload the area, which will despawn the frogs. But most frog rains are little threat to a full herd of beefalo and I think we might actually have two herds right here. I hit a little road bump while building the beeflo pen, because I can't place asparagus walls on the corner of land the way I can place regular walls. They won't align with the fencing or other asparagus, so I need to use an actual wall for these corners. It's fine, I just need to figure something else to do with these green spears. Road bump number two is that even when perfectly placed, the asparagus will block placement of doors next to them, so I need to move them out out of the way, place the doors down, then realign the asparagus. I'm sorry, this is just a ridiculous thing to describe. Can't say I ever learned the fine art of giant crop hitboxes. This seems like such niche information, but this is the game of niche information. You can go as far down the rabbit hole as you want when it comes to game mechanics. But hey, the pen is finished! Shrine, grooming station, and plenty of salt licks. Now, all I need is the cow. Those frog legs I collected are all getting turned into eggs. And the eggs are going to go incubate in the ocean for a few days until they hatch into rotten eggs. I want to make a bit of gunpowder because I have some ideas that will necessitate the use of gunpowder. 
it might actually end up saving me a lot of time. I'm back at the Moonstone Forest a few days before the full moon so that I can do some controlled burning of the area around here. I am done with tree guards. And I need the charcoal anyway, so I'm happy to clear these areas with fire. As soon as all the trees are gone, I'm gonna throw down some stone walls to ideally block any regrowth, just until I can figure out what I want to do with these spots. This full moon was three day segments long, so I waited exactly 45 seconds into night before starting the event. It was a complete success. Varg summoned the max number of hounds, and we got the star staff back at the end. This is how I'm farming moon rock from now on. It's too bad the cleanup usually takes another half day at least, but it's a small price to pay for moon dials. This spring I spotted Kloss at a spawner that I don't ever remember seeing before. I know there could be a couple dozen spawners in the world, but I would have thought that I'd at least see them all by now. Apparently not! Anyway, this spawner is definitely getting blocked because it is nowhere near the desert. and we get two lights from the sack. I had a bunch of extra asparagus from the winter giant growing, so I figured i put it to good use with asparagus bacho. Two asparagus and two ice will give you overheating protection for five minutes. It's not going to be practical to use this constantly throughout summer unless you are prepared to throw 40 asparagus and ice to the cause, but in practical application, I don't need constant cooling. For instance, at night or towards the beginning or end of the season. But it's nice to have that option in my food bundle, just in case I get into a sticky situation without any other cooling options. During a fight with Kloss or Dragonfly, for instance. And I can definitely use one for the antlion fight. Can somebody please tell this koala that this isn't a spectator sport? I'm just worried that Ant was going to target it with her sand spikes and start destroying stuff. But fortunately, she doesn't. I really need to make some koala pens. Here's another thing you should always try to avoid doing batch cooking of mukeka in summer. I can usually get away with a stack of it into the bundle around 91% spoilage, but because of summer's effect on food spoilage, this is actually the absolute worst time to cook batches. It just happens sometimes because I don't like cooking less than a stack and combining the fresh dishes with slightly spoiled dishes already in my bundle. So there's the trade-off, I guess. I'm doing a quick build on this three-tile strip of land that's just been there since I built the road. Sometimes, though, it is really nice to focus on a compact build that exists only to please the eye. If you struggle with larger builds, then try practicing on a smaller canvas. It won't take very long and will likely teach you some important things about your own sense of style. Now I'm working on a slightly larger build on the other side of the desert. Again, nothing super fancy, just a table and chair facing the water with some berry bushes and trees, you know, to keep the air cool, and some astral detectors. These jagged side builds can get tricky, but I find that the less symmetrical I go with these, the better. I was farming glowberries and I wanted to make some moose, so I raided the Juicy Berry Farm and immediately got accosted by three gobblers who proceeded to absolutely loot my berries. Between the hound trap and the pig farm, I have very little use for gobbler meat. Besides, bait pens don't work super well around juicy berry bushes anyway. So I'm just going to gently remind myself to never ever farm these berries during the day ever again. You idiot. And finally, towards the end of summer, I'm turfing up a larger area under my chest zone for an idea for a farm that I really hope is going to work. Don't want to spoil too much for those who haven't been watching the streams, but it's sure to be explosive. And that is absolutely it for year 25. Next year, we're going to mess with this farm a bit, and then I have no idea. Because for the first time, I'm making a recap video before the next year is played. So, you'll just have to watch to find out. I should probably go do something interesting. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the recaps. And maybe next time, we can catch you live over on Twitch. Take care. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Why are you doing this?